Well, hello and welcome to Whistler Magazine. We are upstairs in the uh, Pharmacy Building at the old Cable 6 offices once again. I'm Jim Monahan and a very special guest, and it's great to have her with us. This is Florence Peterson from the Whistler Museum and Archives. Thank you, Jim. Florence, it's, it's really super to see you in the have you. Well, it's always nice to get a plug for the museum yeah. and the archives. Yes, So I'm absolutely. happy to be here. Yeah, okay, great. We'll just give you the location on that quickly, and you should know if you're from Whistler, but if you're not, uh, and you happen to be in the area, it's uh, just as you come into Whistler, it's actually across from Function Junction. Right. Which is, oh, we'll put it in miles. If you happen to be from America, it's about four or five miles south of the lights of the Husky, or maybe 10 <laughs> miles south from the, uh, really? from the town center. But uh, I'm sure people can find you down there, uh, Florence Peterson. We hope they do. It, it's a... Uh, it's not a, uh, a real big building, but it, it, it's, uh, it's big on the inside. There's no question about that if mm -hmm. you ever get a chance to get down and have a look. Uh, Florence Peterson, uh, we're going to talk a lot about the, uh, about the archives and the, and the museum business, but I uh, just want to mention, too, that you're, always, you're also <laughs> a marriage commissioner. In, is, it, is it all of Whistler or Pemberton it's and everywhere? It's the Sea to Sky Corridor. There are four of us. And when people are on holiday, we cover each other. So I've done them at Shannon Falls and as far north as Divine the other day and, and all way points in between, up the mountains, winter and summer, yeah. on the lake shores and uh, in the parks and in many lovely hotel rooms and condos and Yeah, I think you, you, yeah, you get into some <laughs> pretty unusual spots, don't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some super times that you wouldn't get otherwise, I think, especially by heli. And... Uh, um, it's rather exciting for me, anyway, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to get up there. Sure, absolutely, mm. to get up to the top of the mountain. Uh, is there a favorite spot for uh, people getting married around Whistler these days? I know Rainbow Park seems to be real popular. A lot of people Rainbow up there is there. coming in. Brew Creek has become very popular. It's a nice retreat, secluded area, and people are having, I think they have weddings nearly every weekend there. Okay. Yeah, they're doing well, and it's very nice for them. Um, the mountains are both popular winter and summer. Mm -hmm. uh, um, people who have met in special spots, I sometimes hike up behind Emerald or Alpine to a special <laughs> grove where <laughs> it's meaningful for the couple. I uh, did yeah. my first one in the school, the new community school. Oh, really? Because our new Myrtle Phillips Our Phillips new school? Myrtle Phillip, a wonderful oh, community yeah. center there and a lovely room that has um, uh, sort of like a bay window effect called the Miller Room. Lends itself very nicely looking out onto the grass and the trees. Setting was really great, that and that's a nice backup for a, a bad weather day. Absolutely, and yeah, and of course that school has only been open for a couple of weeks, so yes. mm -hmm. you're, you're already busy down there. Oh yeah, well, it was, yeah, it went well too. Yeah, it's uh, interesting what people come up with, it really is. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that's one of those great ideas. Well now, <clears throat> we're going to have to uh, get to a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the things here, but uh, Miller, I'm going to remember that. It's the Miller Room. Miller Room. Miller, Miller, Miller mm -hmm. Creek. <laughs> That's right, for old John Miller, an early yeah. prospector. In fact, it was he who Myrtle and Alec Phillip met when he was down in Vancouver in 1911 delivering his furs to the Hudson Bay Company. And uh, he had a cup of coffee and a little grill down near Gastown today and talked about the fantastic scenery and the super fishing. At Alta Lake. At Alta Lake, because right. he had a little place right down there at Function Junction. Uh, roadhouse sort of on the old Pemberton route and Alec had always had in his mind that he wanted to have a fishing camp. They were from Maine and near the water so in August of 1911 Myrtle and Alec walked up here from Squamish. Walked from Squamish. Walked from Squamish with a pack horse and another friend. And visited old John and uh, surveyed around and came back the next year and bought what is now Rainbow Park. Yeah. Built it as a very fine fishing lodge. Mm -hmm. now, okay, let's get our dates uh, right here. Now, we're, we're talking about 1909, 1910. 19. John Miller's a trapper. He goes to Vancouver. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he meets Alex and, and Myrtle Phillip. 1911. Uh, they've just been married. In 1910. Uh, but then, then they decide to come to Alta Lake, which eventually gets to be Whistler here. But mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll get to that have, in a little bit. Yeah, you have to tell them that. And it ends up that uh, our school becomes... Uh, Myrtle Phillips School. This is actually Myrtle Phillips School too, because mm -hmm. we've had one, but it, that's been mm -hmm. taken up, and this is the second one. It's been called the Myrtle Phillips Elementary School, and now because the community center is combined, it's the Myrtle Phillips Community School, but okay. it keeps her name. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's great, and that's uh, maybe a, a great way for us to start there with uh, John Miller and, uh, <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. Alex and, and Myrtle Phillips. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been along here 
involved in community groups for, for quite a while, but uh, maybe just uh, a little bit about yourself here, Florence Peterson, before I get too much into that. You originally from Vancouver? Burnaby. You were a school teacher? Yes, mm -hmm. high school, Burnaby. Mm -hmm. Yeah? yeah. Uh, Burnaby? Uh -huh. Gosh, a West Coaster. Yep. Uh, West Coaster, <laughs> born in Vancouver and raised in Burnaby. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. a little ways away. I'm from Alberta. You know, oh, not far. I'm not too far away there, but uh, I recruit. I uh, came <laughs> to my senses. <laughs> Good. And I, how, how long in Whistler, though? Did, did you teach I, school in Whistler? No. No. Um, in the days that I thought about coming, it meant traveling to Squamish or Pemberton to the high school. And I mean, there really wasn't a road. It was just rubble. And it meant that I would have had to stay out during the week and come home weekends. And so I thought I might as well stay where I was established, mm -hmm. which I did, and came home weekends for yeah. umpteen years. Mm -hmm. Yes, four other girls and I first came as a summer uh, resident uh, 37 years ago. Wow. And yeah. we came by boat from Vancouver to Squamish and then the train up to Alta Lake. You, t you, t you took what, a boat, a ferry to Squamish? Those Union steamships. Oh, I that see. That was yeah. who brought... That was a better ride than trying to get the, the train right out there of Vancouver? There was no train. There was oh. no road or rail to Squamish from Vancouver. Oh, okay. You had to go by the Union oh. steamship. And it visited Wood Fiber and um, Britannia Beach and it okay. took all their supplies in and took their mail out and all that sort of thing. It was the link. To Vancouver. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. See, yeah. now I am one of yeah. these trying to come late I figured there's always been a road and there's always <laughs> no, been a railway. No, no. So there, the uh, Pacific Great Eastern Railway is what it yes, was. Yes, it was. Only went from Squamish up, and of course it ended exactly. up in Prince George yeah. and whatnot. They didn't yeah. go right to Vancouver. Well, they had started it uh, from West Van. The right of way had been there, but the World War I started, and I understand they took up the steel rails when sure. it was required, and then it didn't get done until after World War II. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it was well into the in 50s, actually, yeah. uh, to connect. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I bet they wish they had that Union Steamship Company run it a couple of years ago. Remember when that oh, slide came down? Oh, yes. <laughs> it, you know, it uh, well, certainly... Well, they could have used it. Yeah. Then, right? And in fact, I think they did start bringing up like a ferry sort of they thing did, to yeah. ferry out people. They've actually built an emergency dock now at Port Hope Cove. Yeah, I noticed that. But, yeah. you know, when we had our last little flood, they wouldn't have got anybody down no. to there to get them out. <laughs> I don't know. You never know yeah, what's going to happen. Yeah, these contingency plans, you never mm -hmm. quite, quite know whether, whether But you have to try. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, that sounds mm -hmm. like a great adventure, though, because you get, you get a, a terrific uh, boat ride up Howe Sound. Oh, yes, definitely. And then you're on the train, which, mm -hmm. is, a, which is a fabulous ride, too. Mm -hmm. Took you all day. You yeah, know, sure, yeah. because mm -hmm. we left uh, foot of Columbia Street in Vancouver at nine ish in the morning, and it called in and made all these stops and loading and unloading. And you'd get into Squamish, and there was a boat train, and you got off and carted all your things onto the train, and it would shunt up the mile into town and stop because oh, yeah. it waited for the loaded freight cars to come in when the tide brought the barges to unhook and bring. Oh, okay, yeah. So sometimes is, you were two and yeah. three hours waiting around Squamish, there, yeah. and then it would go toot -oot, and everybody would yeah. say, well, off we go, and <laughs> you'd come up, and it was the steam trains, and yeah. so it wasn't as fast, and there were water tanks en route to Managed yeah. to have the steam yeah, for yeah, the trip. Keep you going there. Keep yeah. the water going there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> what are four young girls like you doing? Come up to us here. Five young guys. <laughs> Five young girls. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to cabin. get away from it all. Yeah, we yeah, had a four-room summer the cabin. The yeah, when whatnot. you're teaching, you're really intense and working hard with personalities. Uh, big communities, maybe 1,500 people in your school. Absolutely. So it that is a was a drain, right you know, yeah. and we all like to be outdoors and... Actually, one of the gals had put herself through university waitressing at Rainbow Lodge. That's oh, how we heard sure. about it, pooled our money in order to buy it. Yeah. When you think of what it costs now, <laughs> we were very <laughs> lucky to get in at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So you knew one of the gals who, who had worked at, at Rainbow Lodge under Alex uh, Myrtle? Uh, not in Alec and Myrtle. They oh, sold okay. in 48. It was after that uh, when Alec and Audrey Greenwood were operating it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of interesting in that, uh, you know, there's so many college people now that come up to work in Whistler and they, mm -hmm. they don't think, well, well, maybe in the 40s and 50s people yeah. did those things too. Yeah. To, yeah. to earn, help earn money to pay for their yes. tuition yeah. for their, uh, for oh, their yeah. school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, super stuff. And then, uh, now, you're married, but Andy's retired. He just retired. Is he a school teacher too? Fish, finishing carpenter. You know, oh, he did a lot okay. of work in yeah. the hotels and places around the conference center and started in on the sewer plant way back then and okay, but been when, busy. When you and Andy were coming up, though, were you coming up on highway? Actually, I met Andy up here. Oh, here we he go. He was <laughs> finishing his boss's home up here 
And everybody in those days just went to Rainbow Lodge. It was like the neighborhood pub. There wasn't anything yeah. else. It was prior so to it was skiing. Sort of almost a town center it, itself. Yeah, right? Rainbow Lodge. Side, yeah. yeah, that was the uh, the only strip. Uh, three lodges on the lake and a dozen houses down, and uh, became an, it was the community of Alta Lake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. Yep. Yeah. We, we're going to talk about uh, Rainbow Lodge a little bit, and also the community of Alta Lake, which. Uh, <coughs> is Whistler now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After we come back, we'll take a quick break and be uh, right back here at Whistler Magazine with Florence Peterson from the Whistler Museum and Archives right after this break. And welcome back to Whistler Magazine. We're with Florence Peterson from the Whistler Museum and Archives. We were mentioning a little bit in the uh, first part of the show, Florence, that your husband Andy's retired. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, you guys are kind of lucky. You live over on the west side of here, Alta Lake Road, huh? Uh, thank you for calling it the Alta Lake <laughs> Road on the west side. Yes, um, today's prices, we wouldn't be able to afford it. Oh, but yeah. luckily, when we came up, when we did, it was possible, although we had to pool our money in order to, you know, yeah. buy it. It was all relative. But yes, we have a great view, and uh, we're out of the... Uh, fanfare in the rat race if you don't want to join it, but close <laughs> enough to drive around and take part in anything yeah, that's going I on. Yeah, I sometimes kind you of know? think that you've uh, you almost got the best of both worlds over there because, yes. uh, yeah, you can get over there and it's real nice and quiet and mm -hmm. it's just an easy jaunt to Very get around so. the town center yeah. and whatnot, so uh, well, I kind of yeah. admire you being over there. Uh, <laughs> we're lucky, we think, If anyway. you need somebody out in the woodshed there to live in there, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'd love to live over there. Yes. Some of the uh, the early community groups, uh, a lot of people at Whistler don't realize that Whistler was even called Alta Lake. No. And that, that it was until 1970. 75, we, I believe, became incorporated as a resort municipality of Whistler and um, changed the name. Yeah. And. Uh, before that, the movement, of course, with the coming of skiing at Whistler Creek, it uh, developed the condo complexes down there and Alta Vista as the first subdivision, and then later yeah. Alpine Meadows and Emerald. So everything shifted from the school, uh, our little fire station, everything came over to this side because there were more people to serve. Yeah, and, and originally... Uh, on the Alta Lake side, on the west side, it was, uh, am I right, Chaplinville? Well, that no? is a late name. That yeah. was Al That's Alta Lake okay. Station, Alta Lake Village. Yeah. The section foreman, the lineman, and the station agent all had family homes there. And it, uh, a fellow chaplain uh, bought a couple of leases down there, and oh, it just so became a, locally known. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, just locally known mm -hmm. um, because he had two or three of the leases. So oh, okay. that's relatively a late name for the area. That, oh, okay, yeah. uh, for the Alta Lake name. Test me on this. I don't know if it's true. I can't be sure that this is true at all. <laughs> Somebody told me that Alta means uh, high in Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The uh, original uh, name was Summit Lake. Summit. Summit Lake. And after Rainbow Lodge got established, it became a post office. And the address being Summit Lake, B.C., mail was continually being confused to the Summit Lake way north of Prince George, oh, sure. and it was so two, decided two that they <laughs> should change this one, and they chose Alta because it is the high point in the chain of lakes. Uh, the water in Alta Lake flows north and southward, uh, and gradually finally out to the Pacific, one yeah. way and another. So it, it being the high point, yeah, that would yeah. probably be where okay, I'm Okay, I'm right. They didn't lie to me, then I feel much better <laughs> <laughs> carrying that story around for a while. <laughs> That's interesting, yeah, because the Alta Lake flows south, and the water will go through uh -huh. Nita and into Alpha and mm -hmm. up through up the, the Squamish rivers and down. Mm -hmm. The other way, though, we're talking yeah. quite a circuitous route around yes, Pemberton. and that's right, and, and out Green Lake and down through Lillooet and Harrison yeah. and all the way into the Fraser that like way. Fraser, yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah. I'm not sure I went to, might take the shorter route. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty rough still going down that yeah. way. Some of the early community groups you were involved with, uh, Florence Peterson, one was called the Alta Lake Community Club. Yes. Now, did they ever put uh, movies on at the old Whistler Lodge? Oh, <laughs> yes, they, <laughs> they did. did. Okay. And prior to that, they had there. them in our old school, which oh, was uh, yeah. where uh, you're coming into the Alta Lake Strip, and just before the houses, there's three up on your left, the school was right there. And when they widened the road in the 60s, the school was rebuilt where one calls Chaplinville today. And oh, okay, then yeah. uh, that was a uh, burning exercise for the volunteer fire department. When they took that one down. That's right. Yeah. And that was the community hall. Yeah. 
yeah. uh, the poker parlor, the movie house, <laughs> the school, and everybody just shifted tables or benches or school yeah, desks. Yeah, whatever the event was on, you'd, you'd sit right. it all in, in the same hall somehow. And huh? uh, after, <laughs> as I say, Alta Vista developed and Whistler Mountain opened, there were more people over there. So the Beauregards, Pat and Dennis, did a great deal through the winters at traveling over there, often by foot, to put them on at sure. the Whistler Mountain Lodge, which yeah. was Hillcrest Lodge originally. Hillcrest Lodge. Yes. Okay, I remember. Uh, I remember being there. Yeah, and I, I still remember the name too, Alta Lake Community mm -hmm. Club. Although I was never you. an official member, mm -hmm. but <laughs> mm -hmm. maybe some of us yeah. were still paying attention a little bit in those days. <laughs> then we uh, there's another one called the Alta Lake uh, Rape Pairs Association. Right. That's current though, still. Isn't yes, it? Yeah. I believe, uh, although I don't hear much of it lately. But we founded that in 1961-62, and that was because more people were coming up. And there was a lot of um, uh, future with the coming of the skiing, knowing there were going to be a lot of people, and we were still unorganized territory. And sure. therefore, they wanted to have sort of some unit in order to have a policy. And about that time, I must put in here, I don't think it's very well known, but we formed an all sorts club, A-L-S-O-T-S. Uh -oh. And it stood for the Alta Lake Sons of Tipplers Society. Sons of Tipplers. Now, wait a minute, Florence. And we it? went to Rainbow Lodge on Saturday nights. What and lodge? Rainbow Lodge. Rainbow Lodge. Okay. And the money that was left over from the few drinks and the dancing yeah. and everything, um, we'd give to the uh, proprietor and it would be too much. And so we took what was left on the table mm -hmm. and started the, I guess, what you'd call the environmental kick because people were coming up at both Alta Lake Station and Rainbow Station and leaving a lot of garbage. Yeah. So we got a couple of the old um, like 45 gallon drums and bought yeah. paint and painted them green and had a stencil of these initials and that was the garbage disposal <laughs> and that's what we took to the dump. Well, the all sorts. <laughs> the all sorts. You might have to get that group going again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. I remember that. We were talking about it the other day. Lots of fun, you oh, know. Oh gosh, Lots yeah. Of fun. yeah. Sometimes when you made your own are, fun. Are smaller like that, that you do yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hear the story about Burnt Stew Basin too. But before we get that far, there's uh, one other thing that I want to mention people don't uh, realize. I think that uh, you were at one time a member of the Canadian field hockey team. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, when I was younger and fitter. <laughs> mm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, actually, there are three of us up here. Oh, Pat right. Beauregard, Jackie Pope, and I have all played really? on the Canadian field hockey team. Yeah. Yes, and I uh, had a great many trips and good times out of it. Yeah. Have Did you had, get to uh, travel all around Canada or uh, outside of actually, Canada? Actually, we traveled... Um, at that point we were playing, it was mostly just in British Columbia in okay, Canada, yeah. mm -hmm. and we played the Western States, and yes, we went to Australia for a World Cup wow. and traveled yeah. through New Zealand and didn't play in Fiji and Hawaii, but saw that. Mm -hmm. And then we were overseas to the World Cup in Holland, and we had a pre-tour in England, Scotland, and Wales. Wow. Yeah, so we have had a, had a lot, lot of good times that, out huh? of our field <laughs> hockey. Yeah, we owe it a lot. Yeah. Okay, yourself, mm -hmm. Pat Beauregard and Jackie Pope. Jackie Pope, yep. yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. see, well, congratulations. Yep. That, that must have been an awful Yeah, that was a great time. Uh, yeah, and what a great way to see the world, too. Oh, hey? You're for with sure. a gang and you get, yes. you get to play some games. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when you go to travel. these countries, they host you when you've come a long way, and they give you pre or after tours, and you're billeted in homes, and see all the sights in the play every other day, and in the traveling yeah. or sightseeing in between. Mm -hmm. Gave you a great education, let me yeah. tell you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful stuff. Well, that sure means that you were pretty athletic, and uh, mm -hmm. so that's uh, I guess one of the well coming to, coming to Whistler, Alta Lake in those days to get away from things. Also skiing, did you ski an awful lot? I didn't ski a lot. No, no? I was uh, skiing, and we got a, a Dutch coach who forbade us to ski when we oh. were on the team well, in case you broke a leg. Hockey, you were going to play field hockey, hockey and not <laughs> you're follow ski, up you're the attack, you know. So yeah. I didn't really get back to it much. Uh, I did a little in the 60s, but when Whistler right. opened, uh, it was a little bit advanced. Uh, there weren't any sort of uh, intermediate runs that I was. <laughs> yeah, it really was. They started out with a tough skill. They started skill, out they? really, yeah. you know, for good skiing, and it was just a little bit beyond me, and I had other things to do, so I didn't persevere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you must have been up there at one point, because oh, yeah. Burt's Stew Basin oh, <laughs> is yeah. apparently your stew, is it? <laughs> yes. Well, that was a summer trip. Yeah, that, a summer that was trip. a summer trip. Yep. Oh, sure. The local station agent, Don Gow, yeah. now lives in Squamish, and uh, Kelly Fairhurst, one of our five uh -huh. who married Dick Fairhurst, mm -hmm. who operated Cypress Lodge, sure. which is now the hostel. Um, mm -hmm. We went for a hike, and uh, we were out for a week, and heading back into the spearhead. And it was a second night out, and we had stopped and built a little stone fireplace in the creek bed, and 
hung mm -hmm. up our billy can and threw everything left over and some stew into it, <laughs> and then sat down for a happy hour looking out, enjoying the scenery, and we all forgot that oh, it should have been stirred <laughs> till we had a terrible <laughs> smell. So oh. we thought it was quite funny, and we built a cairn and, and tacked a washcloth on a twig <laughs> and had a flag and put down a little sign <laughs> saying, you know, we hear by Chris and you burnt stew basin, Alrighty. August something like 15, 16, 17, 1958. <laughs> and it stuck. <laughs> okay, I don't, stuck well, yeah. other hikers went in and yeah. uh, said, okay, it just sort uh, of okay, this is it. was yeah. a stopover. <laughs> and so, yes, it stuck. Well, that's a great mm -hmm. story, Florence, and mm -hmm. it's still there today if you get a chance to ski Whistler Mountain. You go right up the peak lift and you turn left and you just follow it around. And gosh, you should come up and ski it sometime. Have you skied it? No. It's no, easy I as haven't. pie. It really is. They've got a beautiful outrun there, and it, it comes around. It's, uh, it's not nearly as tough as you think it might be. And it'd be great to get back into the, you know, the Brits 2 Basin yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Because it's marvelous in the, in the winter, too, mm -hmm. because it's, uh, uh, no, it's, I it's just seen a huge it in the snow field. Oh, it's beautiful. We're going to get you up there. Okay. Promise you, we'll figure it out. You're going to take you up by helicopter. We'll <laughs> okay, now there I might There's make it. There's a deal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, well, stay with us. There's uh, three eras that I want to get uh, Florence Peterson to talk about. Well, one's called BS, and I'm going to let her explain that to you. <laughs> then there's a skiing area that got started, and then, of course, when the town center came to Whistler. So stay with us. We'll be right back with Florence Peterson from the Whistler Museum and Archives here on Whistler Magazine on Whistler Cable 6. Welcome back to Whistler Magazine. We're with Florence Peterson from the Whistler Museum and Archives. And just before the break, Florence, we were talking that we were going to come back and talk about three different eras. The BS, I'm going to let you say what that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a collected slideshow to show to spousal programs, conventions, uh, seniors tours, anybody who wants to pay for it to help our fundraising. And we take the early pictures from a lot Myrtle Phillips and some others and put together a story of the BS of Whistler which stands for before skiing <laughs> and so we do it from the turn of the century up to 1960 and so that's what that stands for okay mm -hmm. before skiing <laughs> yep before skiing <laughs> yeah and there's so much stuff there I mean uh, in terms of uh, photographs that, that, that you're able to get that uh, and maybe because you got on the job uh, when you did Florence, you deserve an awful lot of credit. Were you the founding member or one, certainly one of them? Uh, um, one of them, yeah. I yeah. really, I suppose, spearheaded it. But Bill and Elaine Wallace were right-hand people. With the three of us really devoted a couple of years of full-time volunteer in order to put it together. Yeah. My aim was, I felt I was the connecting link with the past pioneers that were here when we came as summer people to the present. So I wanted to really push to get it established and now it could be administered by anybody. And we are looking for somebody to become right. president. <laughs> yeah, so uh, anybody out there, yeah. very definitely we, we like volunteers and it's, um, it's all in order. It's just a matter of operating it as a yeah, uh, well, as I was going to say too, uh, uh, just a wonderful job by you jumping in at, at that time and, and getting it organized before mm -hmm. some of the photographs and some yeah. of the history just gets dispersed and well, lost. Well, Myrtle was my neighbor for over 30 years and we talked a lot about it and Dick Fairhurst too. And we said when skiing came, they didn't want to be forgotten. So I said when I retired and had the time, I would be sure to do something for it. And so I feel I have done what I set out to do. And um, it was great because Myrtle had all her pictures to me before she died and so we got a lot of her artifacts that she had willed to us and so we had a good start it was really because yeah. there weren't a lot of people here through the years and many didn't stay so it's hard to trace them down absolutely yeah hard to keep track of everybody yeah then the skiing hit in the 60s and uh, mm -hmm. we won't go, won't go over this too much because uh, we want people to come down to the museum and archives <laughs> and see some of this stuff mm -hmm. but a lot of people don't realize either that Whistler Mountain, when it opened in 1965, was, was really built with the Olympics in mind. Yes, it was a group of um, Vancouver businessmen who wanted to uh, bid for the Olympics and they formed the Garibaldi Olympic Development uh, Association. Um, and they put on a great uh, push for it and uh, it didn't materialize. It was a little before its time, I think. It was a great vision, um, but a very difficult thing to put forward. And that started uh, them investigating the snowfall and the mm. whole scene, and they developed it. And it opened 
during the holidays at Christmas in 65, but officially in February 66. And okay. it's never looked back, really. And uh, <laughs> no, it's sure. just gone on ahead and, and done some terrific uh, development there. Yeah, the big change is coming again, and that, that would be the third area, would be... Uh, in 1980, when the town center got going, and yeah, uh, I think of course, the first... all of a sudden, this is a totally different place. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, literally, I'm sure people have heard that it was our garbage dump, and the ratepayers maintained it. Yeah. And we had a lease on, I think it was 21 acres, from Crown Land, and they asked if we would give it up in order that, as it was a space that could be developed, rather than at Whistler Creek, it was limited for space to develop a village. And so then they treated the area for three years, and in 78, the first sod turned for phase one. And then, of course, it's... Uh, that's why in the Delta, the restaurant is called Twigs, and they oh. used to have a nightclub called Stumps, because yeah. when they excavated at that end, that is where the debris from land clearing was all dumped, and they couldn't believe it as they dug and excavated that they just had tons and tons... Of twigs and of stumps. Twigs and stumps, <laughs> and so they incorporated into their names. Yeah, great mm. stuff. Wow. Mm. That's, uh, I guess, the, the three areas, but of course it, it goes on and on and on and on. And, uh, oh, yes. Before you go, Florence Peterson, I want to ask you, uh, you happy with all, with all the changes over the years? Or, I can't say I've always been uh, happy. Always, no. no. You know, yeah. um, I have to say that Myrtle Phillip was more progressive in her acceptance of it okay, yeah. than uh, some of us were in the uh, 60s. It was a difficult time with flower children in Hippieville, you know. They were, I think the thing that upset us most was the thievery that went on. You couldn't leave your house unlocked for anybody to use if they needed it. And uh, it became um, a time where it was sort of open season, get what you could, yeah, take what you could. Sure. So th there's riffraff, I'm mm -hmm. sure, at any new development, you know, they come to see what they can do. Yeah, and they uh, move on and things settle down. Phases. That's yeah, right, that's sure. right. And so um, in... Uh, the early 70s, I had to, in my own mind, say, okay, I've got to come to terms and live with what's happening your home or life. move out, you know, and I couldn't move out, so yeah. um, I was a little bit uh, slow to accept the change. But as you get older, you certainly enjoy running water, indoor plumbing, and electric heat. <laughs> <laughs> it saves a lot of slave labor. Yeah, that's wood. Uh, mm -hmm. sure. And that's quite a change from the, yeah. from the summer that you and the four girls came up to. Uh, yeah, to stay. that's true. Yeah, we enjoyed it, though, mind you. It was a not, uh, uh, it was great because it was just summer. We didn't have to survive a winter through no. it, you know. So it was playing at being a pioneer, I suppose you'd say. And yet it was hard work. You limed your outhouse and you trimmed your coal all wicks and, yep. you know, learned how to play chess because there wasn't any <laughs> television or radio <laughs> <laughs> perception. So you made your own fun and people got together for a uh, really close community activity and the locals who did survive the winters up here and work hard at it were very happy to have the regulars come on the weekend to add to their lifestyle yeah. too. Sure. Yeah, to, helped uh, us to, all. To broaden their lives a little bit there yes. too. Yeah. Well you've uh, certainly done a lot, for, uh, a lot for us Florence Peterson and uh, I, uh, I've got to congratulate you, and uh, I'm, I'm sure, I hope there'll be a lot of accolades for you for all the work that you've done with the museum and the archives. Oh, well. And uh, Others help, too. It's not a one-man no, show. <laughs> uh, well, we, yeah. we know that. Uh, everyone involved in it. Maybe one of the best accolades would be if all of the locals and uh, a lot of the tourists would stop in and see it. Yes, that would be very nice. It's free. Uh, we have a donation box, but people are quite impressed and surprised to find it a very pleasant experience not a dusky, dingy, old-type museum. <laughs> they really feel pleased when they've come in. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you, Jim. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Okay, thank you for joining us. It's been fun talking to Florence Peterson from the Whistler Museum and Archives. See you again next week here on Whistler Magazine on Whistler Table 6. And slideshows down there quite often, or do you take uh, those out? We, we do those just at the moment.